is used to sort of complete um, the set of, of languages, um, not complete's a wrong word. Um, JavaScript um, is probably one of the three major uh, what are called web standards. I suppose there's other languages as well. But JavaScript um, sort of is the um, uh, com complete set. Um, remember, we have HTML for the content and the structure of a page, right? In HTML, you put your text, you put your images, you put um, headings, so you define the structure of the page. You say that this section is my header, this section is my footer, this section is my navigation, and so on. So you define the content, and you define how the content is logically structured. CSS is all about the appearance, about the physical appearance and the physical layout, right? Because we could put the navigation, something is still the navigation, but we could physically put that navigation a few different places. We could put it going along the top, we could put it going along the side, we could put it going along the other side, and so on. Plus the physical appearance, what colors things are, how wide things are, what font we use. All those things. All those things belong in the area of CSS. JavaScript accomplishes interactivity. And it allows us to do certain things, make small changes to the page, without having to go back and request another page from the web server. Here is a good example of JavaScript. This will be a fun one to visit because the Cavaliers won yesterday. But let's go to ESPN's website. <laughs> All right, if we go to ESPN website, we go and we load up the page, right? That's an HTML page. It has HTML. It has CSS. But notice some things that we can do. Like we can put our mouse over certain items, and we don't get a completely new page. I know we don't get a completely new page by a couple of clues. First of all, I don't see the status indicating that I'm getting a new page. And secondly, that happens immediately. So there's no like lag where it's waiting for the page to download and so on. This is an example, this is a classic example of what JavaScript adds to the equ uh, equation. All right, It adds some interactivity. And what do I mean by interactivity? I mean that the user does something and the page responds. And the page responds without having to go to the server and getting a new page. We talked last time and, and times before about web servers uh, responding to requests and, and sending data back and so on and so forth. This happens immediately. So we know that this isn't going back to the server. Because even on a fast internet connection, we would see a little bit of a delay if it was redrawing the whole screen. Like if we go and refresh this page, this is a fast internet connection, but notice that the page didn't just boom, appear. It appeared in sections. First we got the one thing, then we got the next thing, and then so on the line. The line. So, I mean, it only took a second or two, but still, there is a visible amount of time it took for the page to be drawn. Whereas here, to sound like Emeril Lagasse, Bam, there it is, right? As we put our mouse over these items, they appear instantaneously without any lag. So how is that done? Well, it's done by the web server when it returns this page. It returns a bunch of stuff that you see, but it also returns a bunch of stuff that you do not see. So all these menus... Those get loaded as soon as the page gets loaded. But you can't see them. They're set to invisible. All right? How do you suppose they're set to invisible? What do you think makes them set to be, be invisible? Is that HTML or is that CSS? CSS. Why? Well, CSS is responsible for the, page, the way the page looks. And making something invisible is certainly an aspect of the way the page looks, right? So CSS is doing its job by making those things invisible. 
When we put our mouse on this item, what do you think happens? Pardon me? Yes, the CSS gets changed to make it visible. So, we can define a whole list of CSS and HTML in our web page that will take effect when the page loads. We then can write JavaScript to go and change any of that stuff, whether it be the CSS or the HTML. All right? And by changing the HTML or CSS, we can change the way the page looks without reloading the page from the server. All right? So that, in a nutshell, is one of the probably the biggest functions of JavaScript. There's some other functions as well, but in a nutshell, it allows us to do something with the page without having to reload a whole brand new page from the web server. All right? This is one great example of what JavaScript is used for, these mouse over menus. Okay? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make our own crude version of these. All right? We're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to make them as fancy, but we're just going to cut to the bare bone and make a simplified version of menus like this. All right? Um, what are some other things JavaScript is used for? JavaScript can be used for um, doing form validation. So, for example, you go and you want to order something from Amazon, but you haven't put in a credit card number. Well, an order can't be processed if there's no credit card number, right? I mean, that's just a given, right? So, therefore, there's validation in JavaScript that looks to see when you submit a form, hey, are all the fields that are supposed to be entered, are they entered in? And if they are, then the form gets to be submitted. If they're not, then the form won't be submitted. JavaScript is also used, often used for photo galleries as well, where you have images and you have thumbnails, and if you click on the thumbnail or put your mouse over the thumbnail, then the bigger image appears. All right? So we're gonna, I'm going to try to do two examples. And what I want you to do for the last assignment, or one of the last assignments, is to adapt one of these two examples. I think I'm going to start out with the images. I was going back and forth in my head. Which do I want to do? The, the images or the menus? We'll do the images, and then we'll wrap up um, the menus um, maybe today or uh, maybe on Thursday. So. I have some images here. And I'm going to take some of these. And there's a lot of ways that we could do this. I'm going to take three of these images. And I'm going to delete the rest. Why do you suppose I'm not going to display a copyright message on this? Because I actually took these pictures. So I own the copyright of them. These are pictures that I took probably at the Cleveland Zoo, maybe at one of the other zoos that I was at, but I think the Cleveland Zoo. All right. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to make a web page that's going to contain thumbnails. What do I mean by thumbnails? I mean smaller versions of the picture. That's what a thumbnail is. So I'm going to draw what this looks like. And I could do this a couple different ways. And I'm going to explain one way I'm going to do it. And then we can talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages. Then we'll talk about a second way I can do it. I have three pictures. So I'm going to have Three thumbnails on the top of the page like that. Thumbnails, again, being smaller versions of the pictures. Now, you can get creative with thumbnails, right? Thumbnails don't have to be just smaller versions of the pictures. You could actually take and crop out some of the picture and make uh, a, a portion of the image the thumbnail. I'm going to have down below it a bigger copy of the picture. All right? And then, as we click on these things, it's going to change the picture to be the bigger picture. So if I click on this one, this guy appears. If I click on this one, that guy appears bigger, and so on. 
In order to do this, we have to learn sort of the recipe for how JavaScript works. All right? And again, this isn't true in 100% of the cases, but it's true in many, many, many of the cases. The recipe for JavaScript is like this. Number one, there's a user event that kicks things off. What I mean by the user event is that the user does something to interact with the page. Now, how does the user interact with the page? Well, with the mouse, with the keyboard, typically, right? Uh, so, by clicking on something, that's the way that you can interact with something. By putting your mouse pointer on something, that's another way that you can interact with it. By pressing a key, that's another way that you can interact with it. So those are the different ways that typically the user interacts with the page. So we write code to capture one of these events and do something. All right? And we'll see a few examples of these events. All right? Um, but that gets the ball rolling. Second thing is, is what's called the DOM. DOM stands for Document Object Model. The Document Object Model is a way to point to different things on the page so that you can change it. In this case, I have four images on the page. When I click on the thumbnail, I want to change the big image to match this little image. There has to be a way that I can refer to this image. Because I have four images on this page, I can't simply say change the image to, to be the image of the lion. right? Because I might have four images or 20 images or whatever. So there has to be a way for me to point to a specific thing on the page that I want to change. And what's more, I have to be able to say, what about it do I want to change? In the menu example, we made menu items visible and invisible. So we changed the way that they were displayed from visible to invisible. All right. In this case, we want to change actually the SRC attribute, right? What attribute of an image specifies what image you see? The SRC attribute. That specifies what image you're going to see. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page that when I click on one of those images, it changes this image and it changes the SRC attribute. And that's the third piece of JavaScript is the JavaScript language itself that allows us to change properties of things on the page. So let's go and let's make this happen. Now, I'm being a little lazy here. I could go and make smaller versions of these images. I could go into an image editor and make a smaller version of, of the lion and a smaller version of the other lion and a smaller version of the orangutan. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going in here. And I'm going to follow responsive design, and I'm going to make each one of those images be about a third of the screen width.
The disadvantage of this is I'm, I'm, I'm downloading all the big pictures all at once. But I only have three of them, so that's OK. If I had a whole bunch of images, I might actually create a thumbnail, which would be simply a smaller version of the image. So, and again, in the interest of clarity, I'm going to include my CSS is part of the web page. Again, we know that typically we are going to make that an external file. So I'm going to make a section. And I'm going to give it an ID of thumbnails. Again, keep in mind you could do this a little bit differently. And I'm going to put in that in, in another section, I'm going to put the big image. So image src equals one dot jpeg all equals picture of animal at zoo. I'm then going to put the thumbnails here. And I'm going to say pound sign thumbnails image. What does that mean? Pound sign thumbnails image. Pardon me? No. Yes. Right. It refers to the pound sign thumbnails refers to the ID. All right, of the section. Anytime you see a pound sign that refers to the ID. So, this style rule only pertains to this section. So it's not going to do every image on the whole site or on the whole page. It's just going to do these images in here. And again, IMG means the images within the thing that has the idea of thumbnails, this style rule applies. So I'm going to do a width of 30% and a margin of 5 pixels. And I'm going to save this. And this is without any JavaScript. So it's not going to have the interactivity yet. But we can look at it. And I'm going to put, just for good measure, I'm going to put a header here. that contains a couple of heading tags. Okay, so I open it up and <coughs> it didn't work. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because I'm using Internet Explorer and I forgot the um, HTML5 shiv. 
Um, I am going to go and change this to open up in Chrome, and there it works. So there I have the three thumbnails and the big image underneath it. All right. Of course, nothing happens because I haven't coded anything to happen. So now I'm going to change this image based on which one of these I click on. All right. So that requires JavaScript. And JavaScript, again, what starts the ball rolling with JavaScript? A user event. Oops. User events typically are attributes on HTML elements, and they start with the word on. All right. In other words, on mouse click. All right. Um, or on click, rather, it is. It's not on mouse click. I'm sorry. On click. On mouse over. On mouse out. These are all examples of events which occur. And we can Google to see an example of all of them. And there's a whole list of them. On click, on click, on change, on click, on mouse over, on mouse out, on key down, on unload. And then there's even more of them beyond that. But we're going to start with having an on-click event. So I'm going to put on each of these images, on each of the thumbnail, on-click. And then I'm going to leave some space for the JavaScript instruction. All right. Now, looking at this, if I would describe verbally what I want to do, I would say, when I click on the thumbnail, I want to change this image. I want to change the image being displayed there. Now, what is the attribute that controls what image is displayed there? It's the SRC attribute. So speaking like a web developer, I want to change the SRC attribute of this image All right, to be whatever image I've clicked on. So I now have to figure out a way to point to that particular image, right? Because I have four images on the page. I don't want to change all of them to be the image of the lion or the image of the orangutan. I want to change only that bigger image to be the image of the lion. So how do you think I'm, what do you think I need to do to make it so that I only change that one image? How can I point to just one thing on the page? How did I point to one thing on the page when I wanted the CSS to apply to just one thing on the page? Yes. Use an ID. All right. An ID, again, you think of an ID, an ID identifies something. It uniquely identifies it. You have a student ID number, right? No one else on campus has your student ID number. They better not, right? Because the student ID number is used to keep track of who gets what grade in what class, what classes you've taken, what degrees you've earned how much money you owe for tuition. It's key used to keep track of everything. And if two people had the same ID, well, that would be a problem then, wouldn't it? Who do you send the bill to? Who gets the degree? You know, what are you, what are you gonna do? Call up both names and they go on stage and fight it out to see who gets the degree? Well, that would be interesting, all right? But probably not a good idea, all right? So when you think of an ID, it, an ID should uniquely identify something on the page. That's why it's important that no two things have the exact same ID. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an ID on this image. 
So I'm just going to give it an idea of big, right? Because this is a big picture. This is the big image on the page. All right? So now what I want to do is I want to find the thing that has an ID of big, and I want to change its SRC property. That's where the DOM and JavaScript come in. All right? How do you point to something on the screen, on the page, that has an ID? You use a function that's sort of a workhorse in JavaScript. All right? And that function is document dot get element by ID. Now, here's the one thing that is um, tough about JavaScript. JavaScript, like other programming languages, is very picky about the syntax. All right, so like you got to match it exactly. You can't say like document get thing by ID and have it figure out right has to be get element by ID. And what's more than that, it's case sensitive. So if I use an upper or lower case wrong, it's not going to work. So, I'm going to do this for, I'm going to get this working, and then we're going to go and break it down to make sure that we understand it completely. So if they click on the first one, if we click on the first one, we change the picture to the first picture. If we click on the second one, we change the big picture to the second image. If we click on the third one, we change the big picture to the third image. That's what this statement says. Document get element by ID big. So it finds the thing on the page that has an ID of big. And I'm going to change the SRC attribute to be one, two, or three depending on which picture we've clicked on. So I'm going to go and save it and refresh. And now I click on the second picture of the lion, the third picture, and I can click and switch in between them. All right. Again, what's the secret of this? We've added interactivity via our JavaScript. All right. Each thing is responsible for its own piece of the puzzle. The JavaScript is responsible for the behavior. The CSS is responsible for the appearance, the HTML, the content. Yes? Uh, how about if you click on the same picture like twice to make it kind of hide, like to kind of disappear? Like uh, if you click on it again and then it should like just disappear and then when you click on the second image it'll that that one will appear. Um, we could do that, but that would be more elaborate. We would have to, um, um, that's one that we could either A, talk about in lab individually, if you were interested in that, or B, possibly on Thursday, go over that, because that's a little more involved. Because that would keep, that, that, would, that requires us to keep track of which one's showing and know that if the one's showing and we click it again, then do something different than if it's not showing. You can. Um, you can use um, a script tag, and in fact, you can use external script files where you take the CS, uh, where you take the, the, the JavaScript code and put it in its own file, just like you put the CSS on its own file. We're just building up slowly, and I wanted to do the most basic example where we simply have a little snippet of JavaScript that's associated with the event, and then a more advanced example, like, for example, the first thing that you mentioned where we were keeping track of whether that image was there or not. That we would not put in a on-click event. We would create a function for that, put that in the script tag, and then call the function from that.
All right, I promised that we would analyze this in more detail. So let me make it really big. Or let me make it bigger. On click, first of all, that means when the user clicks on that element and whatever that element is, in our case that element is the thumbnail image. Document, get element by ID, big. What does that do? Document means that I am looking for something on my current web page. Now, that may seem obvious, like why do you have to do that? Of course we're looking uh, for something on, on my web page. But you can actually write code to open up a second window and use JavaScript to manipulate that. So document simply says the thing that I'm looking to change is somewhere on this web page and not in some other window or some other web page. So that's what document means. Get element by ID means find the thing on the page that has this ID. And in parentheses you have the value of the ID. And that's enclosed in quotes. Notice, and we'll come back to this, but notice that it's enclosed in single quotes. All right? So what this will do is this will find the thing on the page which has the ID of big, which is this image here. We then specify what we want to change about it, right? Because we could change a whole bunch of things about it. We already talked about that, right? We could make it invisible if we wanted to. All right? So do we want to make it invisible? No. We want to change the SRC attribute of it. So if we wanted to change the size, the, the visibility, uh, the position, we could change any attribute of that element that we wanted to. But the one that we are interested in is the SRC attribute. And what are we setting that SRC attribute equal to? We are setting it equal to 1.jpg if they click on the first thumbnail, 2.jpg if they click on the second thumbnail, 3.jpg if they click on the third thumbnail. Now, a few things to note. All right. First of all, Anything that is a command or a variable, and we haven't talked about variables yet really, but is not enclosed in quotes. So get element by ID is a command, right? So that's not in, enclosed in quotes. Big, however, is the value of something. So we enclose that in quotes. The whole JavaScript statement is enclosed in double quotes. Now, because of that, we have to put these things in single quotes. If I put a double quote here, the browser would think that's the end of the JavaScript statement, and it wouldn't work. So we have to use the two different kinds of quotes so that the browser knows, hey, this is the whole JavaScript statement, and this is just this little piece, and this is just that little piece. All right? So, we use a mix of the double and single quotes. Typically, instructions use what's called camel case, which means that the first word is, starts with lowercase, then each subsequent word, the first letter is uppercase, but the rest is lowercase. So get element by ID, the G in get is lowercase, the E in element is uppercase, the B in by is uppercase, and the I in ID is uppercase. The rest is all lowercase. I guess that's supposed to look like a camel, but, you know, with the humps and all that, but I don't know. That's what it's called. All right. 
Troubleshooting. What are the common things that could go wrong? Well, first of all, there's just spelling errors, right? Get element by ID. If you spell that wrong, all right? Let's say you spell that wrong. If I then go and run this page, if I click on it, nothing happens. Now, nothing happens, that's pretty brutal, right? I mean, it just doesn't work. How do you tell and how do you troubleshoot what happened? The first thing you can do is go, and this depends on the browser you're using. I have found Google Chrome gives particularly good error messages, so I do most of my JavaScript testing in Google Chrome. If you go under the menu here, under More Tools, you'll see Developer Tools. And under Developer Tools, if you click on Console, that will show me what's wrong. Now, it doesn't always show you in an obvious way. It's sort of like the validator, right? Remember the validator, it can give you sort of cryptic messages. But at the very least, it points in the right direction. And in this case, the error is pretty obvious. It will say, get L-E-L-M-E-N-T by ID is not a function. That should be a tip off, hey, maybe I spelled it wrong. I thought get element by ID was a function. Oh, look, I forgot the E in element. So you can correct it. and then you're back in business. And you're not getting any errors in the council. Now remember, case is important. So if I say get element by ID, and I capitalize the D and ID, unfortunately, for JavaScript, that's two different things. The capital D and lowercase d are different things. Therefore, it's going to recognize that as a different function. So if I go and look at this and try to run it, it will tell me sort of the same message. Because to it, capitalizing it wrong is the same as spelling it wrong. All right, so get element by ID with a capital D is misspelled just like get element by ID. All right. Especially for beginners, that's one of the most common JavaScript errors that you run into. All right. Um, is just, you know, spelling it wrong or using the wrong case for it. Um, the other thing that you could do wrong is if you get the quotes wrong. So for example, if I forgot quotes around big, let's say. If I forgot quotes around the word big. Cannot set property SRC of null. All right. Again. It's unfortunate that it doesn't just say, hey, you forgot the quotes around big, right? But that's not the way computers work. What it's telling you, essentially, is it doesn't know what big is. It can't find anything to point to when you execute this part of the statement. Because it doesn't know what B-I-G means. Therefore, I'm not pointing to anything. Therefore, it doesn't know if there's an SRC attribute or not. So it says, hey, there's no SRC attribute. I can't change the SRC attribute of nothing. Therefore, that's an error. So if you ever see something like something is null, it means that, hey, maybe what I have in the parentheses here is wrong. Another example of what's wrong, of what could be wrong, rather that's going to show up the same way is what if I get the name or the value of the ID wrong? In other words, I, ch I have big spelled wrong. I put an extra G in it. 
for example. It gives me the exact same error message. All right. So again, what's it doing? Is it can't find the thing that you are trying to point to. Therefore, it doesn't, it can't identify if there's a source attribute or not. Therefore, it gives you an error. If I use the wrong quotes, if I forgot that you need two different sets of quotes here, and I put this like that, it's going to tell me unexpected token. Those are usually among the most confusing errors when you see unexpected token. In a nutshell, what that's telling you is it didn't, it either saw something that it didn't expect or it didn't see something that it did expect. So let's try to read its mind. With double quotes going around the whole instruction, that's what it thinks the whole instruction is. And therefore, that's incomplete. So it hit the end of that instruction, but it's expecting there to be more. So that's why it gives you that error. Would have a similar problem if we had the quotes wrong here or if we omitted the quotes from there. So let's get this back to normal. And there we go. Now, I mentioned that there's different kinds of user events. On click is just one kind of event that we could have. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to save this. I'm going to save a second copy of this. And I'm going to change the event. Instead of on click, I'm going to say on mouse over. And what we're doing there is we're simply changing the way that the user interacts with the page. Instead of actually clicking on the mouse, if the user simply puts the uh, mouse over the image, then it changes. They don't have to click. So if I do that, then I don't have to click if I just put my mouse over the image without clicking, it goes and it changes it. Which one is better? Well, it depends. It depends on, on what is it that you're trying to accomplish. All right? Um, but that's more of a deci design decision, right? Um, what do you think would work better for your users? What do you think would be more intuitive? And so on. That's sort of what you have to decide. All right? Either one of them are acceptable. You can always put a little message that says click on thumbnail to see the larger picture or put your mouse on the thumbnail to see the bigger picture. In this class, we don't aim to make you an expert in JavaScript. There's other classes that you can take, namely CISS 2D2, 232, where we cover JavaScript in more depth. But what I want you to know is at least the purpose that JavaScript fulfills in a web page. And the purpose is, is adding some interactivity to it, namely adding interactivity without going back to the web server. If you could imagine, if every time we put our mouse over this, we had to reload the entire page, that would make this effect very clunky, just like the menus on ESPN. If there was even a slight lag there, then that would make that effect not work nearly as successful. Because this is part of the web page and it gets downloaded from the server when the, ser when the client requests the page from the server, it's part of the web page and therefore 
the functionality happens immediately. Are there any questions? All right. Um, I will post this example. Feel free to take this and adapt it. I don't expect you to um, go too far beyond this for your assignment because, again, we're just introducing it. Next time we will look at the menus and talk about JavaScript for them. Yeah, let's go up the lab. Uh, for this class? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let me just upload this, and then we'll. I'll be up uh, upstairs in a minute.